Well, let's get started. Thank you so much for hopping on with us this afternoon. I hope everybody's having a good Wednesday afternoon. Um, I'm Jennifer, and this is Jordan Ayers, um, and we are presenting the session, Setting Smart Goals with Classwork School Tracker. In today's session, we're going to talk about creating smart goals in classwork. Over the last couple of years, we've been weaving social emotional learning resources into classwork to make it easier for you to make that a part of your practices. Smart goals make practical application of Castle's core competencies. They provide a framework that clearly defines students' goals and objectives, making it much more likely that they'll achieve them. SMART is a research-driven and widely used goal-setting system in education. That's why we've chosen to use that here at Classworks for our student goal tracker. So today we'll discuss the SMART framework and why it's effective, using goal tracker to create academic and behavioral goals, and how to use the communication feed in goal tracker to motivate students and build their confidence. So let's dive in. Jordan, tell us why the SMART framework is effective. Yeah, absolutely. We've all had vague goals in the past, such as I'm going to be a better runner. And chances are that goal never became a reality because it wasn't SMART, which stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And I know because that was once my goal. Goal setting theory tells us that two people will perform very differently on the same task if they have different performance goals, even if they have the same skills and knowledge. Their goals ultimately determine their motivation to succeed. For example, one study looked at the relationship between goal setting and student achievement in over 1,200 high school students learning Spanish. It revealed a statistically significant relationship between the process of setting goals and students' proficiency in Spanish. It found that setting goals gave the students a greater sense of autonomy in their learning, thus leading to higher levels of motivations to succeed. Students who set goals are often more motivated to learn than those who don't, all leading students to better educational outcomes. And that's really huge, Jordan, especially with the impact the pandemic has had on learning. There's no better time than now for students to become pros at setting SMART goals. So what type of SMART goals might you create with students? Although academic goals are always important, you may also want to work with students to create behavioral goals. Students' social emotional well being affects their ability and desire to learn and retain new information. Helping students set behavioral goals will have a positive impact on their academic success. So let's take a look at the type of data that Classworks provides to de determine appropriate academic and behavioral goals for your students. So you've got both assessment and instructional data available to create academic goals. Data can be viewed using reports or live in the program. If your students take the classwork screener, for example, you may want to use the RTI formative recommendations report or the grouping report to identify a skill that needs improvement. For example, if a student is struggling with geometry, help them create a goal focused on improving that skill. Because Classworks automatically adapts a student's learning path based on their most recent data, Likely the student already has instruction assigned to them that will help them achieve that goal. Or you may want students to create goals related to their scores and mastery on their classwork's instruction. Research tells us that when students score an 80% or higher on their classwork's instruction, they see a tremendous improvement on their assessment. And generally that should be a realistic goal because Classworks is delivering lessons to students where they're ready to learn. Progress on the goal can be tracked by looking at their student detail in classwork. Plus, the student can track their own progress using their MyScores page. So as I mentioned, in addition to academic goals, it's also important for students to set and achieve behavioral goals. That's right, Jen. And behavioral goals aren't quite as straightforward as academic goals. First, I want to say that the word behavior in education often has a negative connotation and tends to revolve around discipline, and that really doesn't have to be the reality. Students' social, emotional, and behavioral skill sets directly impact academic growth and school success. For example, cooperation with peers is an indicator of good relationship skills, and being able to describe how you are feeling is an indicator of self-awareness, both castle core competencies. 
students who excel in these areas typically experience better ac academic outcomes as well. Now, chances are you're already doing some sort of behavioral check-ins in your classroom. Like if a student is waiting their turn rather than blurting out an answer, gets him or her a tally mark, and a certain amount of tally marks, gets a prize or a celebration, that's essentially a behavioral goal. It's just not as structured as it could be. So let's take what you're already doing, but add some sound data to back up those efforts and provide students with the why. Classworks provides data to help identify areas of social, emotional, and behavioral needs. Now you may be asking yourself, well, what kind of data does Classworks offer to inform this type of goal setting? Well, we recently introduced a new SE competency survey in Classworks. Student surveys are an excellent tool for supporting the development of the whole student, particularly focusing on social, emotional, and behavioral support. This morning session went over the survey in detail and was um, excellent, but in case you missed it, Classworks SE survey is a 40 question survey that measures these discrete skills you see here in the slide um, and provides a quantitative score. So within your student detail page, you can see your student survey results. And this is the data that can be used to create SMART goals for students. Classworks will soon provide a help center article with some suggested goals based on survey results. And we'll be sure to include that in our follow-up. So let's take a look here at a, um, one student survey results. And you can see the student only scored a 20 on relationship skills. Taking the example from earlier, let's have the student work on waiting their turn and not interrupting others in class. So the goal for the student to work on is, I will wait with my hand raised until I get called on by my teacher. How will the student know when they've accomplished their goal? Well, the student will get a check mark for every time they've waited to speak without interrupting others in class. The SMART goals are time sensitive, so this goal will be wrapped up in the next two weeks. Structuring a goal like this um, teaches students to learn to be patient, and this lays the groundwork for understanding the why this goal is important, because everyone's voice in the class matters. That's a great point, Jordan. And what if you want to create a class behavioral goal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, Jen. So with um, goals, you can either make individual goals or group students together for a group goal or a class-wide goal. So I, you can easily start off by creating more generic class-wide behavioral goals based on your own observations of your class needs. And maybe one that has all students will have at least one friend in class by the end of the month, or I will use please and thank you when talking to others by the end of the month. Then once students have a more sophisticated grasp on goal setting, you can use data from the SE survey grouping report, also shown here in the slide, to create more robust class-wide goals. In this report, you can easily see a grouped view of student ability levels of each CASEL's core competencies. So in this example, you can see the majority of students find it difficult to have self-awareness for their emotional well-being. So a teacher may want to create a class-wide behavioral goal to focus on assisting with this. Students need to be able to vocalize how they're feeling and know when they need to take a quick break to better grasp concepts being taught in class. So a class-wide example could be, I will understand when I need to take a break if I cannot focus on my work. How will students know when they've met this goal? Well, this is your opportunity to, again, keep those accommodations that are already happening in class, or if you're not sure here, one idea is for all students to have three paper clips on their desk each day. When a student needs, a, um, needs and asks for a break, they move a paper clip into their pocket, taking three or less breaks a day. So a student will know when they've met their goal, when they're able to take those breaks, when they need them, and use different debriefing strategies like breathing, counting, or stretching before they go back to working um, to better learn the lesson. This is another goal to complete within two weeks. And again, these are just some suggestions and be on that lookout for our help article with some sample behavioral goals using the SE survey results. So those are all excellent ideas. Now let's walk through how to create a goal together. When students start to use Goal Tracker with, uh, with you for the first time, it's a really good idea to create a class goal together. So, um, also, you want to be able to model that, and we're going to show you that in just a minute. When you think about creating a class goal, make sure you've already laid the groundwork for students to accomplish the goal that you set. For example, if the goal is related to spending time on their classwork instruction and achieving a certain score, you can support students by modeling a classwork's mini lesson, showing them how they can take notes that will help them when completing the activities, 
and setting specific examples um, and expectations for mastery. And let them know that you're monitoring their work and that you're there to help. We have a great video about modeling Classworks instruction that Kellen will put in chat for you. Okay, so let's create an academic goal for our students who are working on individualized learning in Classworks. If you've got your own devices, you can join me um, by going into your own Classworks manager. And we're going to head over to the Goal Tracker tab. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is select your class. So I'm gonna select A or CLA. If this is the first time that you're actually creating goals with your students, your list of students will probably look like this. They'll have no current goal and you'll be able to select this box here at the top to select all the students that you want in your class to create that goal. Now students can only have one goal open at a time. So if you do have some students who already have goals, that's just something to be aware of. So then we'll select create goal and we'll start going through the SMART goal questions. Remember, these are meant to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. You'll also note that you have some goal colors here that you can select from. It is required that the student choose a goal color and you may wanna use these to differentiate some of the goal options in the classroom. So for example, you may choose blue to mean all behavioral goals red for math goals, yellow uh, could be reading goals, and maybe personal goals are all green. So let's start with our first question. What example exactly do you want to accomplish? When you're deciding what the goal is going to be, make sure that it's specific. It should be focused on one single activity or idea. So let's say, since we're talking about students working on their individualized learning in Classworks, that we want students to complete two Classworks units this month, 80% mastery. We'll add our goal. We'll complete two units at 80%. Then we're gonna select our goal color. So I'm gonna go with red and we're gonna hit next. Now, how will you know that you met your goal? We need to decide what is a measurable way to know that we've achieved what we set out to accomplish? We want it to be a clear and specific way that students know that they've done it. So for example, with the goal that we just set, uh, students could use their My Scores dashboard and they can see what they've completed and they can make sure that their unit scores are at or above 80%. You as the teacher could also use students' live data in their detail screen to track their progress towards meeting their goals. So, once you've decided, you'll hit next again, and we'll go to the next question. How will you meet your goal? So now you know that your goal is specific and your goal is measurable. You need to plan out the actions that the students will take to reach the goal. We know that in order to reach the 80% mark, they need to score at least an 80 on each unit quiz. That means they need to take their time working through the mini lesson and the activities before they get to the quiz. I need to communicate with you if they're struggling. So specific actions might be, I'll take notes on the mini lesson and take my time working on the activities so I do well on the quizzes. I'll tell my teacher if I'm having trouble. Okay. Is the goal reachable? So this is a really good time to stop and talk to your students about the SEL core competency of self-awareness. Do they understand what it means or what it feels like to be confident about their goal? And also you wanna consider, will you track confidence together as a class to begin with until they get more comfortable? Or will you designate time for students to go in and track their confidence towards meeting their goals? They have three simple emojis to convey how they're feeling about the steps they're taking to meet their goal that day. So I'll say today we're feeling really confident. And finally, it's time to set your deadline. Remember to choose a date that's realistic. Deadlines help you stay focused and prevent other less important tasks from taking priority and becoming a distraction. With a sense of urgency, student will know what they can do today, next week, and next month to make progress towards their goal. Once you've selected your deadline, hit let's go and you're ready to go with your goals for the class. Those are all 
such awesome ideas and I know students really will enjoy using those emojis as they use them every day in their life. So that's um, a great feature. So once goals are set, what's next? Now it's time to track goal progress and check in with students. Both teachers and students can track progress and chat back and forth using the built-in messaging system. Seeing their teacher's feedback is huge for students. It keeps them motivated as they take steps to accomplish the goal. It's important to designate time for you and your students to track goal progress and communicate. And this doesn't have to be very long. We know time is always of the essence. You may only have 10 or 15 minutes. So in that time, you can actually use the filters on the left that Jen mentioned earlier to be able to sort by confidence level and prioritize then the students that need a little bit more motivation or reassurance. Or you can sort by complete date and check in with students um, about the progress and meeting their deadline if it's fast um, approaching. Now, brief conferences with students will take keep them on track with their goals. And this is especially important for students who feel stuck um, and or uncertain about whether they're going to be successful. You may want them to evaluate whether their goal was realistic or whether the time they allotted is reasonable to accomplish the goal. Again, the conferences can be one or two minutes. The student just needs to know you are monitoring their progress and are there um, to help them. And speaking of our students, let's walk through the student's view. Jen's going to show us um, how students see and track their goals. All right, so let me log in as a student here. Okay, so here I am now logged into our demo site as a student. When students hop on, they're actually gonna see goal tracker right here. So they can select view goals and they should see the goal that you just set with them as a class appears at the top. That'll be their current goal. They'll also have all their previous goals available to them. Uh, one thing to note on this screen is the students do have the option to have these things read aloud. So for some of your younger students um, or for anyone who needs accommodation, they can have the prompts read aloud to them. They also get a notification here when they have a new teacher comment. They can click right into their goal to interact. Here they can choose their confidence and maybe uh, comment back to you if they want to respond to your feedback. Now, if you've already talked with the student, maybe you've conferenced with them that morning and said, great job, you've accomplished your goal, you've met your steps, the student can go in and mark their goal accomplished. Or perhaps you got together, the student wasn't feeling very confident that day, and you decided that this particular goal wasn't realistic for them and you want to reset a new one, they can select goal not met, and then you can create a new goal together. So now you know what it looks like on the teacher side and on the student side, what's next? Yeah, what's the best way to get started, right? Um, so we suggest modeling SMART goals with your students, just like you model other things. Have a conversation about the importance of creating a goal and the benefits. This foundational work is to get the conversation started so students can see real world applications of setting and accomplishing goals. And remember, Motivation and a sense of autonomy increase with setting goals, deciding the steps to achieve them, and then accomplishing your goals. So there's a few ways to do this. So you can give students examples of goals they've already accomplished to remind them how great it feels to do what we set out to do. You can also consider bringing in multimedia to teach students about SMART goals. In the chat, you'll see a link to a blog that has a few different styles of books to support goal setting. Another great option is to share some motivational TED Talks or movies um, to reiterate that importance of goal setting. And then it's also important for you to be transparent and vulnerable with your students. Share your own examples of when a personal goal didn't work out and why. Examples like that are especially important for middle and high school students. This creates a safe place for students to feel comfortable in sharing their own goals and obstacles. All of these conversations will have students become more comfortable with tackling challenging obstacles in life and equip them with how to set themselves up for success. And then another lesson idea that we um, came out, came through when doing, with doing research is to have students create goals before they understand the SMART framework, be hands off as students come up with their own aspirations, and then share the components of what makes a goal a SMART goal and work with students to revise their goals to meet the parameters. It'll resonate really well with them since they've already um, decided that goal is something they're interested in working on. 
Thanks for that, Jordan. So the last important consideration is when will you fit this into your schedule? So here's an example of how some schools work it into their schedule along with some other components of classwork. Remember to include time for students to track, to create and track confidence of their goal, as well as time for conferencing and feedback. So if we use this example, perhaps on Monday, you'll create a class goal together, or if students are often running on their own goals, they can do that individually. And then on Wednesday, you may have students go in before class to check in with their goal confidence and respond to your feedback. And on Friday, you might have a quick conference with students on their progress to meeting their deadline. And of course, plan time for students to take the steps that they need to actually meet their goal. I wanna thank you so much for uh, joining us today to learn about Classworks Gold Tracker. We showed you how to introduce your students to the SMART framework, um, how to use data and the types of data that you have available in Classworks to create your goals, and how to create goals and use the communication feed to motivate students. If you want help using any of these features or any of the resources we, we've shown you, we are here to help you. By using the SMART framework to set goals with your students, you're giving them a strategy that will help them not only throughout their education, but into their future careers. Yeah, absolutely. And if you'd like more information about using the Goal Tracker, feel free to go to our Help Center and you can access that by selecting your name in Classworks on the far right and selecting Classworks Help and then type goal tracker or smart goals into the search bar and you'll see a collection of articles and some video tutorials to help as well. And then you can also schedule a 30 minute virtual connect session with a classwork success specialist by selecting the same drop down on that right side and choosing smart guide training. Um, and thank you all so much again for joining us today. And now let's take some time to answer your questions. Callan, did we get um, any questions that come in over chat? Uh, we haven't ever chat, but we've had some that have come in um, earlier from social media when we were doing some plugs for the session. Um, one question we had was, where can we find the resource that helps you create goals using that SEL survey? Oh, good question. Uh, so that resource is actually going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks, um, and it actually will provide suggestions by grade level and based on those SEL CASEL core competencies of specific goals that you can set for students. So uh, we'll definitely be putting that out on all of our social media. Uh, we'll promote it on our website. If you're not signed up for our blog, updates.classworks.com, that's usually where we put our information out first. Okay, perfect. Um, next question, how do you recommend handling goals for the younger students? I can take that one, Jen. Um, so of course, lower grades and particularly kindergartners, um, really cannot reiterate enough, it's all about modeling, right? It'll be more hands-on for you to start off, um, but no, that's okay. You know, students K through one are just getting comfortable with the classroom. So consider thinking through all the basics of what they're learning, right? Maybe the goal is a class-wide tying your shoe goal. Start with something that you're working towards again. Um, or washing your hands for 20 seconds, right? So those those important things that students are, are becoming more comfortable with. And then when they get older, adjust the goals accordingly, and then they'll get more comfortable as they go along, um, you know, with goal setting. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great one. Thank you.